we cannot go on like this. We have to fix it. Indeed, NOPD staffing at a critical low right now. The New Orleans Inspector General says it raises concerns for your safety and it's costing you money. This comes as the department is below 900 officers, a number which it hasn't seen since World War II. WDSU investigative reporter Cassie Sherm obtained that report released from the OIG. Cassie, break it down. Well, ladies, according to this report here, the lack of officers could cost the city tens of millions of dollars and the city has already spent thousands because of it. The inspector general says recruitment and retention should be the top of mind. Between May 2021 and April 2023, the NOPD lost 287 officers. The New Orleans Inspector General Ed Michelle has spent months investigating how the number of officers is impacting the city. Staffing shortage has created a safety threat for all New Orleanians. But it's not just safety, it's also costing the city millions. Due to the large number of officers separating from the NOPD Louisiana Municipal Police Employees Retirement System, the pension plan for the police officers across the state requires the city of New Orleans to pay more than $50,000 per month. And this is going to be an incredible shortfall over the next 15 years. We're talking about $38 million. And $38 million, are we talking about taxpayer money going towards that? That will come out of the general fund. That's, that's taxpayer funded money, that's correct. We determined that the city was actually informed of the partially dissolved pension plan and to not inform the city council in a timely manner was somewhat irresponsible because the city council is responsible for the origination and the implementation of the budget. It's a lot of money, yeah. Council member Helena Moreno says they recently found out about the fines and the council is searching for solutions. We had a resolution on Friday that said we actually want the city to study moving NOMERS employees who work, NOMERS, which is another pension yeah. plan for city employees, who are part of an OPD to EMPERS. And if we were able to move NOMERS employees who are working at an OPD to EMPERS, these fines would go away. In an email, Impers told me they did give the city that solution previously, but their emails were ignored. So I asked the mayor for her plan. What's the city's plan to deal with, you know, paying back for Empers with the whole police pension fund? So our plan is one that we don't agree. So we're looking um, for litigation, um, as we've said, and we're going to go down that path because right is right and, and we feel wrong is wrong. And um, as it relates uh, to this in terms of paying back, I know Empers had recommended the city maybe transfer some of the people that are on NOMERS over to their system that would help, you know, dissolve some of those payments. Is that something that you guys have considered? No, no. I said that we're considering going down the path towards of, of litigation. I don't agree with any of it. And so at this time, that is our approach. We don't think it's fair. We don't think it's accurate. So we're going to push back. Getting the numbers up would end the fines. When it comes to the number of officers leaving, the OIG says NOPD is going in the right direction by adding more civilians to the force to help with the workload and upping pay. The IG also looked at what concerned officers the most and it wasn't pay. Cultural factors such as office politics, nepotism, corruption, or perceived lack of support for the officers were some of the most commonly cited aspects that the officers disliked most about the job. That's something Interim Chief Michelle Woodfork says she's been working on since day one taking over. I am definitely doing something to change that. I'm putting people where they can thrive, those who are experts at it, not my friends, not my family, not anything like that. That is the culture that I intended to change. I wanted everyone here to feel like they had an opportunity. To Chief Woodfork says if she continues as chief, she will get NOPD out of the hole. My overall expectations is to get a really high number of applicants for both the civilian staff and also the commissioned officers. Um, we have been doing a great job um, of it this year. Last year, we only hired 28 recruit um, applicants. This year, we're above 60. And then we still have another class coming in November. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll have hired at least 90 police recruits. That's my hope. And that gets that number that everyone's talking about that we need to reach. It brings us closer and closer to that number.
Now, the OIG also says it's important NOPD focuses on employees they currently have. He recommends giving current employees a place to provide honest feedback. All right, Cassie, let's get back to those fines. You yes. mentioned that the mayor's administration looking to sue Empress to stop the fines altogether. Yeah, so yes. I guess the question is, would this be the first time? This would actually be the third legal battle between Empress and the city. And some city leaders say they're concerned because if the city does lose this battle, we could be costing taxpayers even more money just trying to fight it. So, you know, a lot of concerns there. Different solutions are being put out, but yeah, so we're going to continue to follow this. Yeah, hopefully they'll find a good solution very soon. Cassie, thank you so much for that update. To read the full report from the OIG, you can visit our website, WDSU.com. Margaret?